I started my period when I was 10. My hormones were raging out of control. I lost my virginity at 13. It would be my intimacy would be my self-medication of choice. I tried to commit suicide at 15. I didn't know how to do better. My sister would always say, you know, you're really extreme. You're either really, really happy or you're really, really sad. You're never just okay. And you're a worry wart. You worry about everything. I thought it was normal. I didn't know any better. But I did have this unbearable emotional pain that seemed to chronically yet progressively grow stronger as the days, months, and years went by. So what do you do as an African-American Christian woman? I turn to God. I build my relationship with Jesus. I pray. I read my Bible. I'm singing. I lead praise and worship. I'm celibate, off and on. <laughs> but I'm actively pursuing God. I had a Jewish coworker share with me that she had been on medication and been seeing a therapist since college. Her story helped me think about going on medication, but I wasn't convinced. I thought, God will fix me. And all the while, God was saying, go to the doctor. You see, in our community, we barely want to go to the doctor for glaucoma, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol. We definitely are not going to the doctor for a mental illness. July 2nd, 2013, I am in a cycle of panic, tears, death, repeat, panic, tears, death, repeat, panic, tears, death, repeat, panic, tears, death, repeat. I feel like my body is going to shatter into a million different people pieces. I'm pleading with my father, Daddy, please take me to the doctor, take me to the hospital. And he's like, let's just smoke some weed. <laughs> Daddy, it's six o'clock in the morning. I don't want to smoke weed with you. Take me to the hospital. In his defense, he was hesitant because he knew they would put me on a 5150. I had no idea what that was. I just knew at the hospital there was medication. We didn't go to the hospital. Instead, we found a psychiatrist that had a next day crisis appointment available. She looked at me and said, your serotonin is negative. That is your body's natural mood stabilizer. You need to be on medication. I eagerly agreed. After about a week on medication, the euphoria of nothing bothers me was incredible. <laughs> I felt like I could breathe. I felt like I was drowning underwater. And I kind of was coming up for air, coming up for these sips of air. And medication brings your head above water, and then to your shoulders, and then to your chest, and then to your waist. And the next thing you know, you're walking down the shoreline. It was a peace that I had been longing to feel forever. I remember turning to my sister and saying, why did I do this ages ago? Everybody should be on medication. The world would be such a better place. <laughs> my diagnosis didn't come right away. I had weekly psychiatry and therapy appointments. I had a medication cocktail that needed to be fine-tuned. I had a negative reaction to a generic medication that ultimately revealed my diagnosis. I had bipolar disorder two. Bipolar disorder one, you have really, really high manic phases and depressive lows. Bipolar disorder two, super productive phases, they call hypomania, but really, really low depressive lows, which is why bipolar disorder two has a higher rate of suicide. My initial reaction, yes, thank you God. You see, my symptoms were the problem. The diagnosis was the solution. It was my answered prayer. Now that I knew what I was dealing with, I could figure out how to treat it, I can figure out how to manage it. With the help of my holistic psychiatrist, my trusted therapist, my village of family and friends, 
I could do better. So now I'm cured, right? Wrong. No. So my pastor tells a story about when you're cooking a pot of gumbo, you can't just stir at the top. You've got to take the spoon and go down and stir all of it because it's not going to cook right. It's going to get sticky. You got it. All that stuff has to come up. My Panamanian mother, she eats rice probably almost every day. When you're cooking rice at the bottom, it's kind of burnt. In Panama, they call that the conkalong. You would just throw that out, right, because it's burnt. In Panama, if you throw that out of the Panamanian household, you might get a whooping. Family members fight over the conkalong. Kind of crunchy, kind of hard, a little bitter. You might crack a molar when you're trying to bite into it. You know, some may call it an acquired taste. I call it self-work. It's the goodness that's tucked away. It's the payment over time. It's the do better. My mental management kit is easy to remember because it's the acronym for meds, and my meds are non-negotiable. M is for medication. I take it every day. E is for exercise. I practice yoga two to three times a week. E is also for emotional support animal. That's a Leo. <laughs> That's my baby. I've had him for a year and a half. I have not had one major depressive episode since I've had him. I also get 10 to 12,000 steps a day walking him. <laughs> Studies have shown that yoga and aerobic exercise increase serotonin production and release. Mm. D is for diet. I try to eat healthy. I try to make healthy choices. But more importantly, my diet is an identifier of symptoms. If I feel like I don't want to eat or I go days without eating, I notify my doctor. S, sleep. Don't mess with my sleep. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't mess with my sleep. It's not pretty. She's not nice. Don't do it. On average, adults need seven to nine hours of sleep. Every single night. My sweet spot is seven and a half hours. But again, sleep is also an identifier of symptoms. If I feel like, you know what, I don't need to sleep. If I'm oversleeping, if I feel like I don't want to get out of bed, I don't want to deal with life, if I can't fall asleep, if I'm waking up in the middle of the night with racing thoughts, I contact my doctor. If you have a mental illness, I encourage you to share your story to mental well-being. The way to destigmatize is to normalize by vocalizing. Yeah. By sharing my story, I'm changing the narrative from I'm ashamed of this mental illness to I'm proud of how I've accepted this diagnosis as a gift from God. Amen. I'm healthy Amen. and I'm shaping into a beautiful, brilliant, outgoing, genius, powerful, amazing, 41-year-old, purpose-driven human being that I was created to be. My name is Leonka Lyons, and I am better. And I dare anyone to argue with that. Thank you.